guys got your Bibles, I'm going to give you, you really don't have to do a lot of Bible hunting. You already know about Romans 8, 28, but we'll be down to 2 Corinthians 11 later on. But if you're taking notes, this is one of them, one of these messages you want to pick up on some notes. And of course, we're going to continue detours. As a matter of fact, I'm entitled tonight, Detours of Life. If you're watching online, amen, it's Detours of Life, that life has detours. And we've walked through Moses, and we've talked about the, the children of Israel and how far they had to go. And once you saw it on the map, you had a paradigm shift. Because you saw it and you thought, okay, it took 40 years, but if they had just went across the waters or uh, on the uh, beach, they could have got there within a few months. But instead, God sent them south across the Red Sea. He began to develop their character. We started studying on the man Joseph. And when Joseph was 17 years old, and I read the story today, and, and I'll be honest, I got teary-eyed. It's funny. It's been a long time since I just read the story. But I started reading in, in chapter 44 through 50, and I, I didn't realize just how in depth that story became with Joseph, that what he went through and the suffering the people went through for the seven years of famine. Seven years, anybody can handle the good. Amen. But when the famine hit, there was a struggle that took place. And as I was walking through that and reading, I thought, man, those all them detours. And then he met his, we'll talk about it Sunday, but he met his brothers again. He reconnected with his father again. And uh, there was one scripture that moved me that he knew at the moment when he saw his brothers, he, he dismissed himself from the room. He went out and wept bitterly. And then he composed himself, and he came back in and became Pharaoh's right-hand man and did what he wanted to do. It, it's just an amazing story of humanity, uh, blessing, detours. Anyway, I, I believe that the strongest lesson we can learn from traveling on the highways of our nation is that the highway of life can't always be straight. There's times that it's going to be detoured it's going to be we're going to occasionally see that and you know when the highway's closed you got to follow the detour sign amen are you just going to sit there so you don't want to sit you want to keep on moving by following the detour signs we're brought again to the smooth highway so life is very much like that perhaps for months years you know joseph went from age 17 till he was 30 before he became with pharaoh but i believe after that let's see that's 13 years and it was another seven eight almost 10 years later, before he met his brothers. Because during the seven years of good times, he didn't meet his brother. It was when the bad times brought his brothers to him. Isn't it funny how bad times bring family to you? Huh? You didn't even know Uncle Eddie existed until you started having a bad time. And he pulled up in his RV. Amen. Detours, number one. Detours appear suddenly without warning. They appear suddenly without warning. If you're taking notes, I'm going to move very briskly. You know, we're not always prepared with information to fortify us against the coming detour. We don't always know. If we knew, if we knew the flood was coming, we could prepare for it. I remember when Harvey hit, I wasn't ready for it. Uh, my family tell you, I wasn't leaving the ranch. I was in defiance because we'd had little floods before. This ain't going to be no big thing. And thank God they made me leave. Amen. Because I, I wouldn't have been able to survive there. It, was, it got that bad. So when you know that a detour is coming, it often it's going to come without warning. Amen, it pops up, so we're not always prepared for that. In the long run, it may be better for us, by the way, if we do not know all the difficulties that lie ahead. If God showed you the detours, if he showed you the bridges out, if he showed you that life was going to take some curves, you know, if we, if we did not know, every part of the trip would be spoiled by the anticipation of trouble. Amen, so then you don't have to have that. So how suddenly, though, appear the detours? One day, you're perfectly well. Next day, you're lying in a hospital. Crazy, isn't it? Amen. This week, I, I, I tried to replace so many things that's taken place this week. And people that I know that have gone through things are in the hospital. Or things I've heard about outside uh, our church room and other churches. Next day, death may have taken a loved one from you. And certainly, we all know that trouble and sorrow are coming to us. But we do not know the moment. We do not know the day. And we thank God. I thank God I don't know when something like that would take place. Number two, seldom we know the length of a detour. This is kind of reviewing a lot of the principles. Seldom do we know the length of a detour. You know, the children of Israel, 40 years for, for them to travel. Joseph ended up, like I said, 13, uh, 22, 24 years or so before the famine was over. When the highway sign points out a detour, you take it without knowing how long it is going to be. When life's detours appear, we do not know how long we will have to suffer, but we're hopeful at the moment to come back to the main highway. Just anywhere around the bend, somewhere this is going to end, Amen. So because of that, we don't always know the length of this thing. And some people seem like they get off detours quicker than others. 
and others just seem like they always own one. Amen. There's always something wrong. Number three, most detours are rough and winding. Woo, rough, winding. You know, I don't believe I have ever seen a good detour road. I don't think they exist. They, they always take you out of your way, delay your arrival at your destination. You must always be traveled slowly, carefully. Likewise, are the detours of life, they require great patience for the traveling. There's something about a detour. It's always a little bit rougher, always a little bit winded. Number four. Detours may have its good point. You know, particularly as a biker, when I hit a detour, sometimes it's more exciting because I already know the road, what the road's going to do. But if you hit a detour, you're going to see some billboards maybe you've never seen. You'll find them little old restaurants that are out there that aren't on the main drag, mom and pop stores. You'll meet a little boy that'll smile at you and say, y'all got the COVID down there in Texas? And you say no, and he said, how about y'all? And he said, no, nah, up here in Arkansas, we ain't got the COVID. We drank creek water. Amen. That was a detour. He, hallelujah. You, you know, if you stay on the main road, you never meet a little kid like that behind a screen door in no grocery store. Hallelujah. So it's important to understand sometimes, sometimes detours, they got their good points. Amen. Uh, over hills, through valleys, you'll see things, beauties of nature, unmolested by, by, by big buildings and things like that, telling us to eat certain wayside. And so it is with the bypath, which you are now traveling. It may bring you to some of the most greatest spiritual blessings you've ever had in your life. Because you don't know what a detour is going to take. Many of us, what happens in our life, we're so used to the same old, same old, that anything disrupts that, screws everything up in our life. Amen. There are times I've found out that life, for me, particularly, has not been the same old, same old. I never know what it's going to throw, but something will be different today. A detour always leads to an appreciation of the good highway. Man, when you hit a detour... Do you get off that thing? If you drive from New Caney, Texas to Cleveland, Texas, and you're going on the northbound lane and you're on a motorcycle, prepare yourself for pucker power. Because what's going to happen is your bike's going to hit. You know how they go in and they, they scrape and they raise that. I was going up there to visit my friend Rob the other day. And I was just going along, and everything was good. I was running about 65, 70. I wasn't speeding. I was running pretty much. The, but when I hit that, all of a sudden, that bike started doing the shimmy shake. Hey, man, I was holding on. And then the front end got into like a high-speed wobble at 65. And I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. Hey, man, this is crazy. I ain't ready for this. It was an anticipation. That, and I want to tell you, honest to God, I went into prayer. And when I hit the road, the smoother part, it was like, <sighs> I could breathe again. And sometimes life can be that way on a detour. You hit it, and it's shaking you all over the place, and you just can't wait to keep praying until you hit a smoother part of the road. You can remember even now, uh, you know, to your great relief, when you bounced over the last few yards of a rough and rugged detour road, and you came out once more back to the smooth highway. A couple of years ago, we were heading up to Alabama on our bikes and had Neil with us, Neil Smith. And uh, Neil, Neil's a, a very uh, patient rider. He's, a, he's, he's ridden for his whole life, and uh, he's, he's, he's just a good rider. But we were riding along, and we hit a rough patch. And I remember I looked in my mirror, and, the, and I heard somebody yell, and I looked up, and he hit a side of the road, and he left his bike. His butt was out of the seat. It was parallel with the handlebars. Amen. His hands were barely touching the handlebars, and he was like he was floating for a minute. And it's, you know, if you're on a bike in front of somebody that's doing that, you can't help them. Nothing you can do. But he came back down perfectly back into his seat. But I'm going to promise you, if you ask Neil Smith, how was your ride to Alabama? He's going to bring up that little bit of the road that was not real smooth. And it's funny. I, I just, I still have memories of that. In the realm of living, the dark days lead to an appreciation of the bright ones. You can't have real bright days until you've had real dark days. Amen. The dark days prepare you for that. If every day were filled with sunshine, amen, we would soon lose our appreciation of it. The folks who live in Miami, Florida, they don't appreciate sunshine like those in, in Montana. Amen. They have no appreciation because they get it all the time. Uh, California, they don't understand that. They get it all the time. But down here, I love the, the, how quick seasons change here in Texas. Amen. I have a deep appreciation. When somebody says, it's cold outside, I say, you didn't go through our summer. You weren't in our summer. You didn't hit 103 degrees standing on tires sweating. Amen. Smelling stinky kids while you were throwing them off. You, you don't have no idea. Amen. We earn these winners. 
We earn these few, few cool days that we get. Amen. That's a good thing. So trouble, sorrow, or affliction are never enjoyed, but they do help us to take full advantage of the good days which the Lord gives. Number six, on a detour, you drive more or less by faith. You have to now because you've never been this way before. The detour road is one that you have not traveled. Moses, children of Israel, never traveled that way. Joseph, I never dreamed that he was going to travel the way that he went. As I walk through Scripture in my mind and I think of David and I think of Abraham and I think of others, they didn't realize that, where they were going to walk and how they were going to travel. Therefore, you must follow the signs which promise to bring you back on the regular highway. And here's a place for us to quote and understand. When I see these signs and I know that I'm moving through life this way, I think to myself, Romans 8, 28, all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. I'm just going to stand on that. If I got a job at Shell, I'm going to stand on that word. Amen. If my kids are sick, I'm going to stand on that word. No matter what's going on, this word is, is universal and it's for all of us. When Paul said that we know. We don't know a lot of stuff, but we know this. It's down inside of our knower. It's got down here that all things work together for good to them that love God. Amen. Are called according to his purpose. All I got to do is love God. Amen. And understand this detour I'm on, he, evidently he's got something to do with it. Amen. If he does, then why this thing's going to work out. So, Pastor, uh, what, what attitude should we take toward the detours of life? First, you can turn around and go back. You can stop right there when the road's closed. Amen. Turn around and head back the other way if you want to. A lot of, be honest with you, cowards, people that are afraid, no backbone, they'll turn around and go back. Amen. Or we can take the detour and grumble and complain about it all the time. Don't you love getting stuck in a car with people like that? Sister Lori and I were talking about vacations with certain people, none of you, amen, but uh, just over life, you know, through our lifetime, amen, and how, sometimes you're not careful. You get stuck with the wrong person on a vacation or on a cruise or, or on a mission trip, amen, <laughs> or somewhere or to, to Kentucky, amen. To see the art, you get, you get, you get, and, and all you, and it, it, it just happens. It's just, all you're hearing is grumbling. Amen. So, so you, you take the detour and they complain. They complain about the food. They complain, complain about the pace. They complain about the, 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 the being crowded in. Amen. So there are many folk who do this. They press on through their troubles, but they're always growling. They're always complaining. Do you know what happens with those people? They don't ride with me anymore. Amen. I mean, seriously, you've got to take a good look at it and say, you know, I, I just think they'd be better off to go with Uncle Eddie. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So such are the folk who are forever telling you about their operations, their sufferings. It doesn't matter what you're going through. They're going through something worse. Amen. Their detour is worse than your detour. They're, 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 they're <laughs> They, they just keep going on and on, and you just say, dear Jesus. Well, never mind. Let's keep moving. As a result of this complaining attitude, their condition is what? Made worse. It just gets worse. Amen. Their, their own troubles are intensified. They lose the friendship of, and sympathy of others. You can only handle so much whining around you until you just kind of shut it off whenever they whine again. Maybe you just got, you got to. So this is a lesson God tried to teach the children of Israel as they marched through over to Sinai for 40 years. He was fed up with their whining. He was fed up with their complaining. He sent a manna, amen, he, a cloud at, at, uh, during the day, fire by night, water out of a rock. He took care of them. When they finally wouldn't shut up complaining and said, we're tired of this bread, this manna, amen, we want, we want flesh, we want something. And God sent quail. And the Bible says, and this is the thing about God that you'll pick up on. He doesn't take a joke real good because when he sent quail in, you know, it's, it's, and I, I'm an eater of quail. I, I think quail's fantastic food. But the quail came up to their neck, and the thing was like manna, manna would last a day and be gone. It wouldn't rot. Amen. You couldn't keep it. It was always fresh the next day. It was like having a sunbeam bakery. Every day you went out there, that fresh, soft bread. I mean, you know, when you go in that grocery store and you get ready to get a loaf of bread, don't tell me you don't squeeze it. Amen. You squeeze it and squeeze, you find that freshest loaf and you pull it out. That's the way the manna was every day. But when the birds started falling, oh, they got excited. They started roasting that quail. Amen. They were making quail souffles. They were making all kinds of quail. But the problem with it, God didn't stop. And he filled up, up to their neck with quail. Amen. And here's the thing. 
Then he allowed it to rot because they couldn't eat it all. God has a way of saying, you know what? You need to quit your whining. You need to, you need to make sure you understand that. You don't want me to answer every prayer you got, every whine that you've got. Amen. This is the lesson that God tried to teach him. So you can accept the detours of life in good cheer in the spirit of the Lord Jesus. Now, the Apostle Paul, again, you hear me use this phrase a lot, I talk with my pastor. Well, we were talking on the way here, and I mentioned to him a book that I love. I mean, this thing's got little gems in it. It's got, it's got Greek language in it. You know, I love that Greek. I don't always throw it at you, but, but I like to read it to see what it really says in the Greek. And he said to me, this is one of them God things. He said, I picked that book up three days ago in a bookstore. He said, as big as a brick. I said, yeah. I said, wait till you get in it. And I started telling him a little bit about that book. Listen, I didn't, I didn't tell him to go buy this book. He found, he found the same book that's on my desk right now that I'm reading. Amen. That's a God thing, wouldn't you say? I just want to say it in front of y'all. It's just a God thing. It's just cool. So the apostle Paul, he adopted such an attitude. Personally, I believe that Paul suffered severe bodily pain. I, I compare myself. If you want to compare me, I don't compare myself to any 21st century preacher. I compare myself to Christ, and then I look at Paul's life, and I realize I have not suffered. I have not been down a bad detour. I have not had the pain. I have not been persecuted, amen, as these guys have. And when I read his story, as I'm walking through, and I'm going to tell you, these have to be detours for Paul. The Scripture says in 2 Corinthians 11, 23, are they Christ's servant? It's insane to say it. I'm far better one. I've done much more work. I've been in prison more, many more times, and that always hits me. When a, when a preacher says, you know what, I've been in jail more than all of y'all. I guess, you know, and I'll mention that at times just because it's, it happened, and, and I thank God it did. God blessed me with children afterwards. But the bottom line is, you don't meet preachers that have gone to prison for righteousness. Uh-huh. She so said, I've been in pri prison more than any of you guys. Amen. I'm far better one. I, I've, I've done much more work, been in prison more time, been beaten more severely, have faced more uh, death more often. These are detours. Five times the Jewish leaders had me beaten with 39 lashes. Now, I want you to th hold on to that because I'm fitting to go somewhere else. Three times Roman officials had me beaten with clubs. The word clubs there is actually the word cane, caning, a caning. So it's different than the lashes. Okay, I'm going to tell you about it in a minute. Once people tried to stone me to death, we read that, three times I was shipwrecked and I drifted on the sea for a night and a day. Because I traveled a lot, I faced dangers from raging rivers, from robbers, from my own people, from other people. I faced dangers in the city, in the open country, on the sea, and from believers who turned out to be false friends. Now, the reason Paul is saying all this is they put him in a place to force him to boast about the sufferings he's gone through. He wasn't going to say it, but they were acting like they were better preachers, they were super saints, and God was doing this, that, and the other. And Paul said, okay, is that your resume? Amen. You, you, you worked in a Pentecostal church for four years, and somebody gossiped about you, and you go act like that was good. Let me tell you what real life's about. Because I've had to work so hard, I've often gone without sleep, been hungry and thirsty, gone without food, without proper clothes during cold weather. Besides these external matters, I have daily pressure of my anxiety about all the churches. Then anyone is weak, I'm weak too. When anyone is caught in a trap, I'm also harmed. In other words, I suffer with those that are suffering, those that are hurt. So when I read this, you got to hear it again. It includes multiple imprisonment. And you go back in the book of Acts, and you read about Paul's life, what he went through. But Paul, Luke, who wrote Acts, didn't record everything that Paul went through. Amen. He didn't write it all down. You've got 28 chapters in the book of Acts. But there ought to be about 40 chapters if you included everything Paul had went through. Amen. He said imprisonments, beatings, flogging, canings. Now, I'm reading about caning because I want to know the difference in a beating, a lashes, three times with lashes, and these three beatings with canes. And I'm studying it, and it, it's like they would take a man, and they would wrap him in what looks like a straitjacket. Then they would tie his feet barefoot around together and lift him up like this so his feet are in the air. Now that his feet are in the air, they would take canes and slap them on the bottom of his feet. Now, when I read that, I cringed. I have the most, I am a tender foot. I do not walk around the house barefooted. I ain't been barefooted since I was 16 years old. The one dread I had when I went to jail 
is I had to walk barefooted on gravel. My foot's fused. It doesn't move. My heel won't touch. I'm on the balls of my feet. Amen. It's painful. And when I read that, I thought, you kidding me, Paul. They strung him up, and they slapped the bottom of his feet until they bloody, toes were broke, almost maimed. They did it two and three times. And I said, Lord God, why they beat a man like that? Why they do it? And then later I read out of the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 15, how beautiful are the feet that preach the gospel of peace and bring good tidings of good news. And I said, you devil, you are trying to stop the gospel from going forward. You are trying to stop this man from walking. You are trying to stop this man from moving. So when Paul lays this list out, he said, guys, I don't think you understand. My detours have been very severe. They have been extremely painful. When they beat my feet, he meant I couldn't go nowhere. And that made sense to me. Then he talked about being stoned to death. Of course, he was and went to the heavens and came back. Then he talked about three shipwrecks. Well, only in the book of Acts chapter 27, we read the shipwreck where he was in on the Isle of Malta. Amen. Bit by a snake, shook it off. Remember the whole story? But he said, no, no I'm going to tell you something. That's what, that's what Luke wrote down. I remember two more. How many know you remember? You remember what you've gone through in life. You remember the detours that brought you to where you're at. You remember getting on that boat out in the middle of the water, and all of a sudden you're, you're floating on a plank somewhere or holding on to a whiskey barrel, maybe not whiskey. You, you're, you remember. Paul said, I remember. I remember three times I was shipwrecked. I remember being night and the day floating in the water and open sea. Amen. He hadn't always had enough food, clothes, sleep, friends. He'd been chased by bandits, been infuriated by religious leaders defended the gospel, battled temptation and anxiety over his young churches. Thank God for cheerful sufferers. Every now and then, I will meet someone, and I have in my life, who have gone through terrible diseases with smiles on their face and showed me how to. They've struggled through life and hit detours, amen, lost loved ones, and showed me, that, look, it's going to be all right to see them again. Amen. They taught me things in life. Hallelujah. And when you have those kind of people around you, you thank God for that, that cheerful surfer, sufferer every day. I do not understand it all, but I love God. I trust him completely. Amen. Listen, sometimes you got to pause. You got to hold back just a little, and you got to think about the word of God, which you just read. Hallelujah. Sorrow may be traveling with you. David said, goodness and mercy are going to travel with me. Amen. No matter what I've gone through in life, when you read about David's life, it was full of all kinds of sufferings with his children. Amen. All kinds. And yet he said, goodness and mercy are going to follow me all the days. Now let me start closing here. Pastor, when does the detour end? Good question, huh? Found it. John 14. We sang about it. That song. In my father's house, there's a place for me. Amen. That's where the detours end. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do you believe in God? I love the scripture that out of King James says, you trust in God, trust also in me. My father's house has many rooms. That were not so, would have, I would have told you that where I'm going to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come back and take you to be with me, that you'll always be with me. Amen. You know the place where I am going. When I read this, I realize the detours. God has a place for us. It's the Father's. David Livingston was a great missionary who went through a lot of struggles. Someone asked David Livingston, which verse in the Bible went most to him? Without hesitation, he said, Lo, I am with you always. Lo, I am with you always. When you pause for a moment and recognize the presence of him who stands by you through detours, through illness, affliction, amen, the mystery of human suffering is always before us and hardly a day goes by that I do not hear some person say, I wonder why I had to suffer so much. I wonder why I'm going through this. And I, I am one of those guys that can always show you somebody that's struggling a little bit more, but I know your suffering is real. I know your pain is real. Amen. And I don't have the answer. I've never had the answer to human suffering, but this I do know. Humans suffer. Humans detour. Humans go through anger. Humans have 
And that's why I said Sunday, don't tell me God will give you a life. How did I say? About more than you can bear. You know, but he won't put on me more than I can bear. God will always put on you more than you can bear. Amen. To prove that he is all sufficient and you need him. Amen. Amen. So when I, I read what, what this man Livingston said, the world is, you know, the world is one of sin, suffering. And again, we talked about in the beginning of the service, there is a devil out there. There is a Satan. Amen. There is wickedness in this world. And I can only suggest that you remember that this world, amen, being that way, and has it's long been full of the devil. Hallelujah. We're going to have illness. We're going to have afflictions. Before I got here, I just flipped on the news, and there it was again. Children suffer. This one suffer. That one suffer. And then you hear somebody, you know, shot, boost, boosted, COVID, no symptoms. Didn't make sense. All of this don't make sense. That's what I'm saying. I, I struggle with their misinformation. Now we got another strand coming. God, how long? How long? Hey, Amen. We're going to have to endure foolishness, craziness, and some of it realness. But some of it has been very real. So we have a blessed promise. As we read, 2 Corinthians 12, 9, says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect and weak. The last place, there are detours of disappointment. No one in life is free from this detour. I believe everyone is on them, whether they realize it or not. And I think once you realize, once you realize this is simply a detour, then life gets a little bit better. If, if I was going down the bumpy road and shaking all the time and wondering why all this is happening, I said, God, what's up? But then once I realized, you know what? This is simply a detour. And the one thing I know about detours, they're not going to last forever. And I'll hit a smooth road again. It'll straighten out. There'll be some good times. I'll be able to look back and tell a friend of mine, hey, this kind of rough. Yeah, I was on that road last week. You're going to be all right. Amen. Stay to the right. Been down it before. Don't get in the left lane. Stay to the right. Amen. Because I've been down that detour. Hallelujah. They're not going to last forever. In the face of disappointment, we have to smile. We've got to stay sweet. We've got to trust God. You know, my life is not all it would be without the detours that took place, without all the disappointments that took place, with all the suffering. And so neither would yours. Amen. God used all of those to make us who we are. So we close, and we'll really repeat this verse together. Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Father, I thank you for the word of God. I thank you for detour. Lord, I, you know, the thing is, Father, there are times that we don't have to thank you for it. We can just endure it, whine and gripe. But I find when I thank you for it, it brings meaning to it. So I thank you for the detour. I thank you for life's ups and downs, twists and turns. God, I ask that you bring us into a safe harbor eventually. And God, after that, whatever you have for us. But as we explore this word, as we see it in the word of God, I thank you that you have never left us nor forsaken us while we've endured it. Jesus, amen. Amen? Amen. Well, that's all I got for you tonight. Happy birthday, David. Hallelujah. Please, uh, on your way out, look back there and tell him happy birthday, okay? These men that work with me mean the world, family. You know, I walk through the property, and there'd be Joseph, Scholar, and Addie, and dog running on the property. I walk back the other way, David, Tony, three munchkins, going to get something for his dad and mom, man, who are living on the property. So it's never a dull moment there. And then here goes Speedy Gonzalez driving through the property. Ramirez. Amen. God love you. We'll see y'all on Sunday. If you want to come out and work with us on Friday and Saturday cutting trees, amen, come on out and hang out with us. Love you. You too, Keith.